This podcast will talk you through the ups and downs in the entertainment industry. Each and every one of you has a talent, but it's a tough business. People gonna tell you, get a real job. By introducing you to sustainable, moldable methods in a crazy, cutthroat world. Let us harness our willpower and take real action. Don't let it get you down. Join me, brothers and sisters, on a journey through trials and tribulations. Unfake it till you make it. Welcome to the Unfake It Till You Make It podcast. I'm Tony Suriano, and this is episode... 13. I wish it was Friday because that would be cool, but it's Sunday. And a disclaimer, this episode is very different than the traditional format of the show. If you're a film buff or into film and TV excitement, I hope you will enjoy this one. For new listeners, let me tell you a bit about how the show usually goes. I interview entertainment industry professionals like my recent guests, Jake Staley, a wonderful film and TV composer, and also guests like Ryan Connolly, YouTube star and creator of Film Riot. I learn and share their methods, strategies, and effective mindsets that they've developed to basically stay just sane enough to thrive in it all without being a fake schmuck. We talk ups and downs, as well as the formulated habits they forego that keep them thriving in this beautiful, cutthroat world. Now, truth be told, running a podcast isn't as easy as it seems. I won't bore you with all that is involved, but I will say that scheduling interviews and juggling time is a tough part. I have a bunch of great interviews lined up, but they all happen to be for the following next weeks. So this week, I had to figure out something equally as cool to share with you guys, and it is a late night conversation with a best friend of mine who I have not seen in years. His name is Daniel Aceves, a.k.a. Danny Legs. He has these freakishly long legs. I named him that in high school. He is a video game advertisement designer, masking expert, film historian, and a well-versed vintage photographer. In fact, he took the infamous black and white photo of me standing in a doorway, which you can see on our website, unfakeittillyoumakeit.com, as well as he inspired the screaming lemon icon that we use for this podcast. We actually recorded this a couple months back after screening a John Carpenter's 1981 film, Escape from New York. After the movie, we had a long four-hour session of playing catch-up, and halfway through I decided to throw on some mics just for fun. Legs and I got into a lot of in-depth talk about amazing films, our favorite scenes, why we love them, the technical sides, and we get into a late night laughing fit towards the end. (laughs) If you're looking for a couple of film guys to hang out with for the next while and want to hear about some really great films and classic TV shows, you may enjoy this episode with Daniel Aceves and myself. We certainly did. We were talking about Leica lenses. Oh, geez, yeah. No, I... uh Man, I'm just ready to like trade in all my equipment and just kind of start fresh. And something that has always um, interested me is is the Leica camera. So even uh, oh, I was also going to mention they have a new uh, Leica. I don't know how it's pretty recent, but it's a it's a digital camera, and they've stripped away the lcd so now there's no lcd screen on the back it's a digital camera but they got rid of all the the things that would make it a digital camera other than like the sensor why (laughs) for for (laughs) crazy purists who who want to like pretend they're shooting film like looks yeah so so on the back instead of an lcd screen and a menu system now it's just like an uh a dial to uh to set your iso hmm. so you set your iso and and then on the hmm. top of the camera i, I believe it had a, a frame counter still so oh. it's, it's it's a digital i think it's like a digital frame counter but hmm. uh, it's really basic and that one sells for like a couple grand more than what um their their normal flagship model sells for so hmm. it's it's really interesting what they're doing but at the same time kind of ridiculous interesting 
There's so many cameras out there, so many lenses. Oh, jeez, yeah. I love lenses. I remember, okay, um, a past girlfriend of mine, like, saw my insanity with lenses. And for the whole year, I was searching for these Takumar lenses that I think you mm. either told me about Takumar, did you? Yeah. Or you yeah. told me about, you definitely got me into vintage, vintage lenses. But the, so first I bought one or two, a 50 millimeter Takumar lens. And that it was like uh, from the 1960s, but it was just the regular ones. And then I kept looking for the other parts, uh, the other parts of like a standard lens set. So the 35s and the 24 and the mm-hmm. 85 and the 135. I wanted to have all five just to have it. And these lenses are so smooth with the with the focus ring. I loved it. But then when I found out on eBay, I actually bought the basic one. There's one above it called the Takumar uh Mult, super multi coated. Oh yeah, and those are that. I realized after I researched what it meant. It meant get it. It has six layers or something, so it won't start getting yellowed over the years. Yeah, it protects the yeah protects the lens. So itself. right when I figured that out, I I found a re, you know a good deal. They're still they started getting more expensive. I found a fifty millimeter. So I sold mine and I had the fifty uh, uh, super multi coated. And then eventually throughout that whole year, but it took a lot of searching and a lot of like, especially because yeah. I couldn't just buy the, there was some of them were like four or $500 yeah, for the 85. And I was like, my budget was like 200 for each or 300, but I spent, I think I spent a little over 300 for the 85. And when I finally had them all, I remember that whole like last three weeks of finding the, the 85, which is my last one. I think mm-hmm. my, my girlfriend was like, just she saw how obsessed I was and I started thinking I was like weird about it. I don't know. I, I had this weird feeling like, am I too into this? I'm obsessed. Well, well no, I, I think you did it right as well because you want, if, if you want to have like a consistent look throughout your photography and your, your videography, it's, it's good to get a lens set with similar lenses or from the same manufacturer mm-hmm. or the same, uh, the same lineup and um i think that's that's a a wise decision to make too because (laughs) again you just you just have a consistent look and and some lens makers are because some lens makers will will differ in their design and um you could really have a noticeable difference in in your image Mm -hmm. not true and people will pick up on that yeah i mean I was about to laugh because I took so much time. It was probably a whole I, year. I was going to say, I've never even seen some of the other lenses that you have. Yeah, so. uh, yeah. It like took the 85? Me, like, oh, I haven't so seen nice, that like, for sale in a long time. And I'm not kidding you. It took that so much time, but literally I've used them. I've only used them maybe like four or five times. Maybe. Oh, really? I'm talking like a day, four or five days times, like not in per job. And it's the only reason was is because if it was video, if it was like a paid video gig, mm-hmm. usually if it was a low budget, I would, I wouldn't want to take all my lens. I'm not going to do primes cause it's probably like a documentary style or be behind the scenes stuff. So I would just take my 24 to one Oh five or, or whatever it was. Yeah. You know, yeah. but when I was doing my own list for fun, I would, I would take out the primes and I had this thought, I think I did it for two of the lenses, but I wanted to just take out just the 24. And I know you do this a lot. Take out one prime for the whole day, and that's all you can shoot with. Oh, and yeah. And then we, we uh. got to have a prime day for sure. Oh, that'd be really cool. Look, we do five. That'd be fun. Like a five, um, one, two, three, four, five. So that's five weeks. And I don't know why I counted that. But where we meet once a week, and we go out with just that one prime, and we start at 24, you know, just all standards. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be really cool. And then we pick our really fun. we pick our top five or something for each day, and we we do our little adjustments if we want to, and then we should like print the top one for each week, and then you know, yeah, sell no, it to that'd be really members. cool. No, yeah, no, it's it's so important to uh, to kind of visualize all uh, focal lengths. Uh, only I think only after you experiment with. Um, uh, all the different focal lengths that you can get a hold of if you can get a hold of prime lenses easily. But 
uh, I, I only after you 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 test all these these different ones, um, you know, find the one that you like or a combination of some that you like, and and work with those. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't. To tell you the truth, I need more of that. I need to just take one lens out and really get comfortable. And oh, I'm only using fifty. Yeah, you know, um, because how I usually approach filmmaking I mean I, I, I just look at I'm looking at like the frame and, I, and I'm like oh the style I want for here I want it to look natural or so I'm like between 50 and 80 or 85 and mm. oh I want a little more out of focus because the background's not that important or something so I'll move the camera back zoom in like it's not too much of uh, oh like oh we need a 35 you know yeah. I, I usually actually if I'm thinking about it right now, if I I usually go, oh, we want a 24 when we want it to look a little like close and interesting or a really beautiful scenic shot wide. And then I go 50s neutral and then 85 to 135 just like really strong focus far away. That's it. I'm not really breaking each one down as much as maybe I, I could, you know? Yeah, I uh, 35 millimeters always interested me. Um mostly for its its ability to kind of create like personal space between uh the audience and the subject so or or the when when I'm you know shooting still photography uh like myself myself in the subject so um it's it's just got that perspective that you're almost you're the perspective of a fi- like a, a normal fifty millimeter lens would give you, but you're still kind of wide enough to where you're you have like breathing space between mm. the subject, and yeah, I think yeah. I think that's an important look too. I know and, the, and you see it all the time. You see it all the time in movies. Hmm. Yeah, the thirty five. Yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned like the subject. If you have a twenty four, and you know, if it fits, even if it fits your style and it's like kind of an int- weird scene or something, you know, because when you get, if you want to do a medium shot of someone on 24 millimeter, it's going to, they're going to look a little beveled and it's distorted a little, right? Yeah, the distortion's so, so, so great. Like, it's interesting going up to an actor or your model that close, how you have to be. I mean, if they're very professional, of course, it's easier, but let's say you're just hobbying around. And you get close to the actor and then they get a little comfortable and you won't get maybe the shot you want because of that. But the 35, gets, it still has a little of that. That's when it starts to distort, right? A yeah, little. Yeah, so, but then you back, but you back out for the medium shot. So you give them a little space so they can be a little more comfortable and then get more what I think you would, you would, you're looking for. Yeah, no, that's a really fun uh, focal link to use. Oh, man. So... Oh. oh, go ahead. Ah. <laughs> no, okay, wait. First of all, that, that made me think. Don't forget what you're going to say, but I wanted to mention for the record because it was very interesting. I haven't talked to Daniel for, I haven't talked to you uh, for like two years almost, literally, because you fucking phased me out somehow with your, your fucking uh. your video game world. <laughs> no, anyway, no, but no, he doesn't play him, but he makes the, a lot of the art and stuff. Uh, anyway, oh, I have been playing him really more, more recently. <laughs> That's what beca- because my girlfriend got me uh, a PS4 finally, like uh, after years of not having any kind of console. Uh, okay. So, but, so well, now I'm slowly, but I'm only playing uh, yeah, one game. Yeah, so. yeah, you gotta like, yeah, make sure you don't get insane with it. No, it's like no you work just, on video games for eight to twelve hours, and then you go home and play them for four. <laughs> you know, people do that. It's no, it's seriously, yeah, it's happened a couple nights. <laughs> but here's what I wanted to say. So I didn't talk to you for a long time, and then I told you, hey, I'm leaving the country. And when I left, remember, for the year, or almost the year, and we, we talked on the phone, we had a good conversation, but we were supposed to meet up, whatever. I had to leave. You blew me off. And then, <laughs> whatever, I came back, and I was like, oh, man, I heard this song that reminded me of you, and I sent it to you. Oh, Do you right. know what it was called or no? Um, it was probably somewhere in the yeah, blog. Yeah, I'd probably have to look okay. up. But what was cool is I heard it and I was like, oh, Daniel, you're going to love this song. You might probably know it, but maybe you don't. And it was, some, it was an obscure song. And I sent it to you with oh, a Spotify thing. It and was um, Boards Canada? 
think. It might be because that was I was definitely into that this band Boards of Canada at the time still am. Yeah. So the song Obscure really cool and you messaged me back and said I literally was dreaming about this song before. Well, uh that not happened? not that I was dreaming but I woke up with the it's a lot of the times I wake up and this happens I'm sure to everybody where you wake up and you just have this like song playing in your head. For whatever reason mm. it just pops into your head. And wow. and it or or I don't know if maybe nobody else experiences that. Yeah, I don't think that. anyone has that. Really? No. <laughs> no. I hope they do. I mean, that's kind of cool. I, I mean, listen well, to a lot of music, and, yeah. and and I used to fall asleep with a lot of music playing and uh, through my headphones, and and I would wake up and I would just have this song playing in my head, and I would hear it in my in my head as if I was hearing it uh, really vivid. in person. Mm. Yeah, and and I woke up with one of the that song that you sent me yeah. and w- that was a weird feeling it was really strange because you know you sent it to that me is and i'm really like, odd i'm like what the hell is going on <laughs> i thought you were joking and and now I mean, no it happens now. yeah and then there that was doesn't something happen. else that happens to you i mean sure. yeah i know uh, there's coincidences you know. no but i mean the, oh the song when i wake up i wake up and and i hear like I'm a little teapot short. No. I kind of so, like that song, and that has been stuck in my head, but not when I wake up. Hmm. I think Daniel wants to leave now. What? No. What? <laughs> well, well, okay, we were outside. We were driving, and what else? I said something, and you're like, what? I've, wanted, I've been thinking about that for years. What was that? Oh, um, that was... Oh, this shit. is the connection of good friends, and that's... Cool. Oh, having a... Uh, uh, device on your car that displays and uh, that displays words and and like small phrases to <laughs> to drivers behind you that follow you so close yes, and that shine their ride fucking your ass. beams at you yes and, and, and uh, yeah and i was like saying oh what if there was something that flips up and then you like finish the statement we were like what i've been thinking about that for years yeah it's having some funny. sort of computer connected to it so where <laughs> that, you can i never thought about that custom that's I, cool thought, like like you, a small dude, you get an app Dude, an app or uh, what else would work for it? But the phone app would be perfect. All you have to do is we should, a little later after we get some other endeavors finished, we should actually make this as a novelty thing and sell it. I'm surprised, sell it, it, has, a, I'm surprised it hasn't been invented yet. I mean, it's probably illegal, but like we have sure something. But we, but we have something that we you can easily attach to your car and it, an app easily. You type in whenever you want. It shows. Well, I was, I was thinking um, that... It would sit behind your back windshield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it would good. sit so within the car. I like that. Yeah, and but then people, it, it, people would still see it. See that. Well, I mean, if if it's displayed like uh, at a certain brightness or something, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, and I was wearing brightness, so they like swerve out. There. <laughs> oh, I, I've always wanted. And this is stupid, but I've always wanted to install like high beams in the back of my. <laughs> I, okay, that's great. And you know what? I've always wanted to install in the back. Like a that would fucking, be so dangerous. No, I've always wanted to install a. Uh, what do you call it? And I actually think I did on my 1962 classic. I think I did a reverse horn. A so reverse like horn. like a a horn on the back of your car, but as loud as like a truck horn. Oh, so if they start to beep, you that. go Burr, and it just yeah. And I maybe tried it because with my classic car, you remember I set up like I all love these. That car. I had all these uh, funny sounds on there like horses. Oh, and, I and, and the um, dolphins, the PA system. Yeah, the PA or system, and it would, I could talk to people, and then also <laughs> I would have the, that the animal good. noises. But, yeah, I do remember the. Speaking of this, <laughs> this car. I mean, not this car, but the the car idea, and battling those assholes that are on your ass. Yeah. Although, I mean, now we're a little more mature. We like to uh, mindfulness, right? And think, oh, right. you know what? I'm just gonna not look back and just drive to the right, relax. Yeah. But in the old days, I wanted to install like a tennis ball gun <laughs> on the back where it would be angled down at the ground. So when I push the button, it goes. Vroom. And it lands like, and it would perfectly, the geometry would be matched where it hits their windows, you know? So they go, oh, and it'd be like, <laughs> and, yeah, I wanted to work, do that. Yeah. It could. And uh, I would, I would have loved to do that so many times, huh. but you know, you can't really, what are we there to fix people? Right. You know? yeah, LA drivers. Yeah. This is LA problems. First world, I mean, problems, you know? 
Yeah, no, I, I've always, I've always <laughs> visualized that that device though. The the it would be like a uh, like a basic display. Um, you know, you've seen them uh, like those. I don't. Need, I'm pretty sure they're liquid crystal, uh, or yeah, I they, know what you're um, talking about like really low bit kind of quality thing. Mm. Something that you can build incredibly easily and then just program it to yes to display it's words. Prob- yeah, you know, it's funny. It's probably out Profanities. there. Yeah, it's probably out there, but no one has used it on a car or put it on a car. Yeah. It's almost like those construction signs, kind of something like a miniature version of that. Yeah. You know, yeah. watch the road. Right, exactly. Yeah. God, that's funny. <sighs> oh, um, Boards of Canada. Mm-hmm. So have you, you've been listening to them or? Yeah, yeah. Love that band. Um, I've been putting their songs on repeat while I write. Do you, so, uh, what, do you have a favorite song so far? Uh, oh, you put, the song was uh, Reach for the Dead. Yes. Love that song. That's the song, Boards of Canada, Reach for the Dead. That album has another great song called, um, the, jeez. With an S. I was going to oh. say the Silent Earth or something Earth. Hmm. Uh, Let's see if I can pull it up. Oh, I have it in my actually. I have it in my night drive. Uh, what's it called? Playlist. Night drive. Here we go. Okay, white. Cyclosa. What's that? How do you say that word? Cyclosa. Yeah. What does that mean? I love that song. I don't know. Here. They got Let's great titles. So. Let's see if it can play. This is the- I love that it's so song. good. And so this, believe it or not, I'll put this song on repeat, seamless repeat. Oh, this is your night drive yeah. playlist. But I'll, while I write, and sometimes, and it just makes me feel like I'm supposed to finish something. I'm supposed to do something. It's finish. definitely got this like creates us almost like a sense of anxiety. Yeah, that's the thing, and 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 it, but it makes me want to continue. So yeah. maybe the anxiety is like pushing oh. me to. I was gonna ask if I really want to find that song. Yeah, but this the the track that you sent me was "Reach for the Dead." And uh, "Reach for the Dead" was so cool. By the way, Daniel and I just got back from an amazing experience. We saw the movie in what was it, nineteen eighty one. Escape from New York. 1981, yeah. I think it was 81, and Dean Cundy was the director of photography on that film and so many amazing films. And I got to talk to him in person, snapped the picture with him, chatted about th- this podcast, and I'm looking forward to him being on this podcast. He sounded interested, and we exchanged emails. He, he did Back to the Future. He did... The Thing with John the Carpenter. Thing. He did Halloween yeah. One, Halloween Two. He did uh, what? What else? Uh, uh, who Framed Roger Rabbit? And all these favorite movies. Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, Daniel and I are a lot of our favorite movies. He did, and we didn't even we weren't really aware, but we were the biggest fans of his <laughs> since we were kids. So that's going to be exciting. What a great guy, too. He's yeah, just very he, very humble. Just yeah. We got to hear some of his thoughts, and I was the first person to raise my hand to ask the question. Yeah. And I did that because I wanted <clears throat> to make sure I stood out because I wanted to talk to him a little later. And I and I think that he recognized me when I saw him at the end of the line, you know? Hmm. I think that maybe allowed me to stay there a little longer because people were trying to, like, oh, next, peop- next person, next person, after he signs the autograph. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's funny? He was signing, like, he gave me his email on the back of my card, right? Hmm. And to everyone else's eyes, they were thinking, oh, he's um, giving him an autograph. And I didn't realize that till later. I thought, because I was thinking, oh man, like they're going to see that like, he's giving me the email. Like, I don't want them to see his email for privacy purposes. Right. And I don't know. I was just thinking weird things during that. And then I'm like, oh, from everyone else's eyes, they thought I was, I was getting the autograph, which I did in a different form. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> man. I just keep thinking about being on the set of Back to the Future, Dean Cundy and, and Robert Zemeckis, and they're just like t- talking, like how you and I were just talking to each other and thinking about scenes. We were just sitting on the patio talking about some how we would film something or see something in photography. And then they're like, let's do it. And then they make Back to the Future. <laughs> right, yeah. It's 
Amazing. Yeah, there's so many great settings and and uh, locations on that movie. What's your favorite part of that movie? Uh, a part that really stands out to me right now is... Oh, geez. There's multiple, but um, my first thought was the diner scene where he meets his dad. So, Or he sees his dad in the past, but before that... Oh, my, oh, wait, my favorite wait. scene is the jacket when it and the boots they like they are automatic they fit him automatically or no oh no I'm talking about Back to the Future oh that's number two yeah that's yeah, number that, two that's number two oh sorry that's number two yeah number so one when he, yeah in the first oh one. wait okay before he goes into the diner what happens oh, uh, you know what's really cool um, he, uh, Dean Cundy was also talking about that too remember how him and John Carpenter really like reveals yeah reveals for the audiences and in that in that scene that I would just described, uh, Marty uh, Crispin Glover, uh, his profile is being photographed, and then Marty McFly kind of reveals himself um, to the audience. So that's the that's Dean Kundi. Yeah, that's Dean Kundi shot. Yeah, that's so, awesome. So in those movies, when you see stuff like that, that's Dean Kundi. Yeah, it's Dean Kundi. Man, I, idea, I really. can't wait to rewatch so many of his movies, and I will. I don't know. I, I feel like I'll get a different perspective. Oh yeah. Just because I one, I met him and and two, I, I heard about how he talks a little bit just a little bit. I'm gonna interview him more, but about the actual his process. It's gonna be freaking great. Uh, mm. it's another great scene in Back to the Future. I mean, I literally feel like pretty much every scene is great, right? But Every scene that lasts longer than like a thirty second little in between thing is is almost what's the word for it beyond magical. Uh, I mean, you have them um, in the chase with the skateboard scene. Obviously, is one oh, of the best yeah. scenes in the oh, world. Yeah. And you know, I've mentioned this before, but I didn't tell you if you don't know. But Back to the Future, the script is one of the best written scripts for people that are trying to study how to write a script. Hmm. Like the only thing, the anomaly of that movie is the inciting incident of the movie happens 30 minutes in where usually movies, it happens five to 15 minutes in. Yeah, that's true. So it's like it takes 30 minutes before shot, Doc gets shot in the parking lot with the terrorists because you build up the whole fun. It's just so fun. You're seeing Marty and you're you're learning about the doc. So you don't really even need an inciting incident because it, yet because it's so new and interesting and these characters are so different but they're connected. So that's probably why it worked. It was so interesting and these characters are so different, you know? And then 30 minutes in starts and then now you have the best movie, one of the best movies in the world. Yeah. yeah. Wow, and then okay, let's talk about the thing. Oh yes, that's another Dean Cundy movie. What's your favorite part of that movie? Oh, easily the the um, when they're trying to resuscitate the guy on the table, and he sticks his arm inside, and the uh, the stomach opens up, revealing the teeth of the monster, and it just <laughs> takes his arms. Oh God. That scene is just so gruesome and so incredibly uh, the makeup effects and the so good the makeup effects in there. Oh geez, uh, yeah, because they switched out the actor and put in an, uh, another actor who had lost his limbs, oh. and they did that scene with with the actor who um, didn't have arms, and so that's pretty interesting too. Wow. That's a good idea. I love it. Yeah, yeah it's, it, I, you when know, you watch it again, you're like... some things I wonder how, how they did stuff. And when you learn, it's so innovative. It's not just like a digital yeah. fix. Even though digital... To get to do the digital fix, it's very innovative. But once you have it, it's like, oh, okay. But yeah. <laughs> when, it's, when it's pure in the camera, like tricks on Oh, set, optical the, effects. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah it's, that... it's, it's, I think it's the best. I mean, I prefer to set up the scene with as much as you can where like if we didn't do anything digital to this it's great you know and then if you mm-hmm. have to add stuff oh, man, yeah I think that's an important uh, characteristic mm. to develop in your filmmaking yeah. getting getting the shot uh, 
as close as you want to the end um, visual as as you as you need. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because then you won't have so much extra post stuff to make up for your mistakes. Right. You know, right. I mean, it's cool that you can do that, but take the extra time and get get that scene right. You know, tweak that light and then set up those things over there and you know yeah, yeah. and you're good what but, what scene stuck out to you you know thing? so i've it's funny i i rewatched that movie maybe two years ago but every time i've seen it it makes me feel like it's so real and it's yeah. so pure um the i mentioned it before to you because I, i'm trying to think of an exact scene i really liked but what I just loved overall is the character development and, and the actors, how they all had such expansive characters and it's all in one location. And there's like eight stars in that movie. Basically they're all part of the movie. There's it's, yeah. it's incredible. Like just thinking about how, how much blocking and how they figured out where they're going to go and do the scenes. That's so much work and they must've worked so hard to get, to get what they got. Um, I love the paranoia. Uh, created by the film when you're when you're watching it i mean even you kind of like have a moment where you're you uh you're kind of questioning who's who and yes if, if it's really the alien or oh what oh, okay you know what i love that the scene when they're testing the blood oh that one's and it's great getting too. so heated and everyone's flipping out and they're just trying to keep their cool yeah and then you just like waiting and the droplet comes in and then it's safe that guy's good next yeah. Next, and then what? What happens? Like some the blood reacts fucked up or something. Yeah, eventually, I, th- and I think like the second like, to last guy that they test, it uh, it reacts. The the alien reacts, and then he starts shaking in his chair, and it just he, you know it just gets gruesome from there. It's so good. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, the dog scene too. The dog scene is so messed up as much as as it's beautifully done. Hmm. Where the dog is, uh, <clears throat> the the dog that they found in the uh, the beginning of the movie that is, I remember that. is really the alien. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It's it's in the cage with the other dogs, but the other other dogs can sense that it's not, you know, it's not normal, hmm. and uh, they start barking at it, and at a certain point, it starts to assimilate the other dogs, and it splits open. And its oh, skin yeah. just like peels back. That effect is amazing in there. Yeah, it's especially for the so time. But even done. that. Okay, that movie. When I rewatched it two years ago, if it was, I remember thinking this holds up for today to me. This oh yeah, holds up. But oh, you yeah. know how there's there's other movies that it's like oh well, that that was like cool for then. It's fun to watch now because it's so classic. But it's not like it doesn't make you feel like it's you're in that real moment. But that right. movie, I feel. I'm in the moment. The moment with them, I'm I'm part of that team, that scientist team trying to figure out that alien yeah. stuff. That's incredible. Hmm. Dean Cundey did Jurassic Park. I mean, we, we might as well just talk about all these amazing movies, <laughs> right? Because I mean, they're they're some of the most cinematic, uh, influential, influential, well shot, and just masterpieces almost not even almost my friend like i think jurassic park the back to the futures halloween escape from new york those are the staples and those are like genre defying yeah that's a good good way to put it and any filmmaker or people that have experienced those movies or in that time like they're so influencing and 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 uh Back to the Future and Jurassic Park specifically are so magical. Mm-hmm. I mean, not only because we think those things don't really exist, but when just the the music in all of them. Who who did the music in Back to the Future? It wasn't the dude from um, Jurassic Park. Do you know? Because yeah, Jurassic Park was John Williams, was it? Yeah, it's John Williams. I mean, Spielberg and John Williams work how Tim Burton and Daniel Elfman work. Like yeah. it's. That, that, that's another thing. Back to the Future. Who did the music to Back to the Future? Oh, I think we do that have Uncle Google. I do want to say that's James Horner, but let's, let's find that out. <clears throat> I thinking of Jurassic Park. Just hearing the music of Jurassic Park gets me 
into this fantastical mode. You're in the music? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I love about filmmaking so much is that music is equally as important. And sometimes if you don't use music, is it's equal as important as well. Uh-huh. Alan Silvestri. Alan Silvestri. Yeah. I, I, I definitely heard of him. So, but only from Back to the Future. I haven't heard. <laughs> he of must him have done so many other ones. Though. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Oh, we don't know. Uh, Phil Tippett. Phil Tippett was an animator who worked on Jurassic Park, and mm-hmm. basically responsible for a lot of the um, the uh, dinosaur designs. Those are amazing. Uh, how they worked, how they were animated. Hmm. Um, Brilliant guy. He also did Empire Strikes Back, and he worked with uh, Dean Kundi on wow. on Jurassic Park. Pretty incredible. Damn. I I still when I watch Jurassic Park and and I definitely do to see those dinosaurs come to life is still amazing. It doesn't look ever cheap. It doesn't look ever like cheesy. I love it. Uh, it, I I think a. Uh, good portion of that was uh animatronic and it it was the perfect blend of animatronics and uh cgi yeah there's a lot of cgi scenes more than i thought there actually was it's not a detectable cgi movie that's the coolest part but here's the other cool part about that too phil tippett was not a cgi animator he was uh used to creating practical effects for, for films mm. and did so with, uh, you know, um, what are they called? Uh, armatures, mm. uh, creating, you know, uh, skins on top of armatures to, to move them about. Mm. He, since, since they were moving towards more, uh, computer generated images, he was th- he was sitting there going, you know, am I going to be out of a job with this movie? What, what's going on? Where's my place? They uh, got together and they designed um, an armature. Uh, I was going to say uh, um, many armatures for, for him to animate that was connected to a computer. So basically he would animate like he traditionally did. Hmm. And it was almost as if he was um, animating a uh, uh, you, motion capture, motion capture armature. If you can imagine that, I'm totally lost. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like it's like uh, an armature that you would use to create like claymation mm. or or stop stop motion animation. So he was uh, animating with that. But it was that armature was connected to the computer, so it was. Uh, sending all the information that the, uh, the real computer, thing. that the CGI yeah. animators needed oh. to create their um, their pieces. Nowadays, they do stuff like that a lot, right? Well, I that mean, that, the beginning that, of that, that was, or, no, well, oh. well, that was specifically done for, that was created for Phil Tippett to use. Oh, okay. Be- because he was on, he was, uh, you know, attached to the movie and he was working on the movie. Hmm. But um, he wasn't a CGI animator. You know what I mean? Interesting. So he was of the the older school of animation, and he was didn't have the the technical knowledge to to animate mm-hmm. with computer software. So they rigged um, an armature of his to deliver all that information that they needed. Which is again, it was it was a custom thing that they did specifically for him pretty cool Hmm. it's really cool oh and and you know uh he's uh also responsible for um like the tauntaun and empire strikes back uh the atat walkers damn were yeah beautiful work uh him and him and uh a team uh, working on the atat walkers to their their to develop all their motion and movement and just incredible so much goes on in filmmaking that is essential and no one really yeah. I mean most people don't know about it. a lot of the filmmakers don't know about it you know it's great a lot goes into it and everything you see in a film 
so meticulous, you know? Oh, yes. It doesn't just happen usually. It's not. No, there like are no orchestra, accidents. Same thing, orchestra. You know, it's not like they're just improvising. It's like written right. out strict and then put some of the motions into it. But like, it's incredible. Okay, Jurassic Park. Um, what are some f- amazing scenes? Everyone's great, but I love when Jeff Goldblum talks in that movie all the time. He's like, he <laughs> said, "Well, now, now you're um, you're going with against nature." Like, I don't know. He's like, I wish I knew some of his funny quotes. I'm I'm so tired right now, but uh, he's great. Yeah, yeah. I I really enjoy his scenes too, and I I like the scene where he's um he was just injured from the T-Rex attack and he was being taken back on the Jeep to the, uh, the main building, the headquarters. And he's sitting on, um, he's sitting and he's almost shirtless and he's kind of like all battered. Hmm. Uh, I just, for some reason that he's, he's talking in that scene too. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, and he's saying some really good. funny stuff. Just, yeah. well, he's, he almost faced death. Oh man, uh, <laughs> the guy, um, the guy that was in Seinfeld, you know, the heavy set guy. Oh, Wayne Knight, that yeah. bastard! I, he's such a good actor in that movie, and I've always hated him because he's ruining everything. Well, he he's great because uh, he starred in uh, Third Rock from the Sun <laughs> oh, as yeah. uh, Officer Don. I forgot about that. Oh, that shows. I know that's extremely one of your favorites. funny too. Yeah. I I went to high. Well, my high school. Um, What's the the kid's name? I love him. He's Gordon. Joseph Gordon. Yeah, Lovett. Joseph, he Joseph went to Gord. Lo- love it. No, he went to Valley Alternative, and I'm either was really huh. young when he went there, but my sister was in the same class with him. I think. How funny. Yeah, and, and he he is a great guy. Yeah. Uh, back then, I don't. Know, I think he was just a goofball or something. But um, musician too. Yeah. Oh, great drummer. Great every. He basically yeah, he, this guy. I remember him playing guitar. He like, sings and plays guitar. Yeah, he's yeah. so talented, and he was in Batman. And I was so Inception. happy. I was so. I forgot he was in Inception. I got to yeah. watch that again. I'm so happy that he like re bloomed his career. He took time off and actually studied college stuff that he wanted That's to right. learn. Yeah. And he is someone. He started Rec, uh, R E C. Um, I don't know, oh, press record it's called press record and it's for I should join I should ask Joey uh, we should do something together basically you can come up with projects and pitch it to them and they can get it funded for you to do and it doesn't it's not just filmmaking it's like it could be avant-garde it's, interesting I don't know something creative that is public for pub- public so this is something that um, it's a website he created for creators Huh. To collaborate with if each other and also to pitch. Sometimes I think on the site, I've reviewed the site a couple times, but I never followed through with like making, I think it's kind of like an on spec thing where you have to create and pitch them something. But a lot of times I think you can pitch them like a written idea or a quick collage of something. And if someone else collaborates with you, they can help you get funded for it and you can make some money and then it's it's okay to put it bluntly it's like all of us work together and it we put it into this final product and you could be just one part of it like oh i'm a good an- i'm a good animator for this project um and you see someone else has a project going and they're like it's a it's a avant-garde um thought process project where it's a little bit of filmmaking a little bit of animating and then some photography and you're like well i'm an animator like look at my stuff and if you if they like it you get you join and maybe you get a little compensation, mm. and it's it's very communal. Yeah, interesting. And yeah, I will put that in the show notes. Oh man, there's so many things to do, Daniel, and we're dying. Oh, what does that remind me of? Oh, that reminds me of Alien. Oh Remember right, when it's like yeah. a wet sound, I. <laughs> yeah, dude, I used to call Daniel. Uh, sound effects yeah i've been working on my uh, <laughs> nice few <school>. voices uh <laughs> yeah, oh jeez, dude i used to call you sound effects wait what, what have you been working on i've been working on um <clears throat> excuse me uh george takai do you know i should but i don't he's uh he is uh work on the voice show me the voice and then maybe i'll know 
uh, hello. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> I actually, uh, he was from Star Trek, right? Correct. <laughs> That's right. Yes. And uh, I've also uh, I've managed to star in multiple projects <laughs> and work with many actors over the years. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm sometimes, just... no. What if I try to do it? A... Uh, oh, Shatner. <laughs> Shatner and I just, I just destroyed oh. it, which I just did. Oh, Bill. God. You piece of shit. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I, I've <laughs> that been... Was good. That I, was I, good. I, it, it used to be a lot better. <laughs> and, and for... Uh, my girlfriend hates when I do those kind of things, so... So she just stifles your freaking creativity. No, Gosh, not at all. It. Not at all. But I, I, I will... Do you see how they could be a little annoying? Right <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I, I used to do Captain Picard, too. Wait, who's that and, uh, Oh, man. Just do it. Are you kidding? Uh, I, I see. Daniel knows all the names and the tech specs and stuff. <laughs> I forget all the names of everything. Except, uh, the Star, except new people. Star Trek, the ne- next generation. I mean, you've never seen okay, that? Okay, yeah, I'm you've pretty sure. It. I'm sure. Is that a movie or is that the TV show? The TV show. Okay, I never really watched the TV show oh, you because I was such a Star Wars it. fan that I was like, oh, Star Trek. I used to think Star oh, Trek's no, trying to be like Star Wars or vice versa. I love know? both, it, but I'm not yeah, one I, or the other. I, wa- I like the Star Trek movies, though. I've seen a lot of the movies, and they're pretty cool. So I would be down to probably watch the Oh, the newer TV movies, show. though. Well, they were like 90s. Early. No, that's not that new. Resurrection? What about? Remember with Data? Mm-hmm. Wait, I like Data. So, That's one of my favorite characters in life. Data's awesome, yeah. I wish I can do uh, Data's voice, but... I don't even know how he sounds, but I just remember it's seeing hard. it. It's uh-huh. hard. What other voices? Oh, wait. Show me the voice. The... Um, huh? <laughs> no, no. You just did that one. The other oh, yeah. One, sorry. Uh, well, let's see. Who would be... Uh, um... <clears throat> No, I can't do any of those <laughs> right wait, now. I, I want to do Worf. I, I, I always practice like, Wh- their voices. But you don't know. You know what? Never mind. <laughs> Come on. Never mind. Dude, oh, I, I was going to say, if you like Red Red Dwarf, Star Trek is like, Red Dwarf was basically like a parody of yeah. that show. Okay. So, so when yeah, you- Yeah, they s- talk to the computer, the, the ship, and then- Yeah, yeah. And Star Wars, so, same thing. A, again, like, a, just almost like a Star Trek parody. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you telling me Star Trek- uh, there was a last man, and then a hologram came to him. No, no what, I, what I mean by parody, oh, okay. it's, it's kind of like that, that. Yeah, like okay. science fiction, you know, ship and red exploring. Dwarf. Red Dwarf is one of the best British TV shows that yeah, Dan one introduced of, me. One of the most like funniest years ago. But uh, you have to. Uh, hone but on your. But I was going to say, if, if you like, if you like Red Dwarf, then Star Trek is like a very serious science fiction show, mm-hmm. and um, and it's. Or I'm, I was going to say the next generation. That's, awesome. That's what I'm talking about. So huh. it should be on Netflix. I, I really encourage you to check it out because you'll you'll be in it and you'll be like, "Holy shit!" There's no, there's no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flawed. There's, <laughs> there's no currency in this future. Like how you, you just like. You you deserve everything that what? You know, that's okay, available. I'm that's weird. I've Dude, never so heard cool. anyone just talk about Star Trek like that. That's interesting. No, it's so it's such a an incredible world, like a universe that they live in, and, imagine, and maybe in the future we'll we'll achieve that. But that imagine being ideal. The, the actors. No, true. That'd be interesting. But the actors on there over years and years of being in the spaceship and playing like you're in the spaceship, being in that mindset. I, I mean, that has got to transfer into the, our, quote, reality. Hmm. And imagine being that actor, the the star, one of the stars, and you walk down your normal place and maybe you're, you go into a coffee shop and you maybe like a certain angle you look up to this and you feel like you're in a ship. Like because your ship is on your mind, a spaceship, um, all these light beamings and all these things. And that's got to be interesting to hear about if they've had any, what do they call it? You know how... When people lose a limb, they have like phantom limb, whatever. Mm, so yeah. there's got to be something when you're in a TV show for so long, it carries over to your real life. Now, oh, like, yeah. Like once I, you retired from it, you know? Yeah, I can't imagine it not. It, it Since it's such a big part of their lives. Yeah, they're literally growing on that show. They're grow, aging on that show for 10 years a lot of times. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the reasons. Uh, Data, that's one of the reasons why he wanted to stop um, making... 
you know, playing that that character was because he decided that, you know, he was getting older and that he wasn't able to really kind of uh, convey what the character needed, which was Data is ageless. Oh, he doesn't, yeah. He's true. not an aging, you know, he's a, he's a mechanical. I love that. Yeah. So. Speaking of that, like we should just, there's so much to get into, but what about, I was just sent a video about the head transplant. Wait, are you talking about the X-Files? Nope. Oh my God. <laughs> Daniel and I love the X-Files. Where the More. hell can you see the X-Files well, now? Yeah, remember I'm, on I'm, the Netflix? It on, used to be on Netflix okay, and Daniel now it's like I, on Hulu or something. I, I don't yeah, remember, but I don't have access to it. Yeah, it's want, hard. I need to watch him. <laughs> I just I need to watch every okay, episode. Look, look, look. <laughs> so fucking time. good. For, yeah. Okay. For, Daniel and I. Oh man. Have an X Files like fetish. I. It has to be a fetish. We because... love it so much, and multiple times over the years we're like, "Oh, you're watching that." And like, we find yeah. out we're each watching it or something, and I think the next time we watch it, but it's hard to do this. We I really want the next time we, we should sit watch, down it. And watch it. We should watch it as. As it used to premiere, one one yes, every week. Yes, exactly. And we just and, like <laughs> well, go away for the week, and we'll like we'll sit and think about it, and wait, we'll contemplate we'll wait upon for it. Mondays. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man, that would be so fun. Okay, this is what we should. This is, <laughs> and it'll go on for like ten years. We'll, yeah, yeah. we'll do this for the night. This will be a ten year project. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how. Okay, but now I love it. But I wonder if there's a way we can do that, but also have something in the end to show from it. For oh, like yeah. our own creative project. So maybe we can come up with something where we do it once a week, but before the X-Files and after we do some kind of activity together. So maybe before... Cre- we recreate team- a favorite scene or something like that. Oh, or- that that's all... No. No, that, no, that's always fun. That'd be amazing. <laughs> that is always fun. Like I love doing that when I watch those naughty... That would be... In- no, no, I'm kidding. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just wrong. Okay, it's like 1 a.m. here, and and you know, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But check this out, Daniel. Imagine this. I can see how time flies by on this thing. I know man. it's so fun. What are we at right now? 52 minutes. Wow. Yeah, it, that's why it's it's the deep long. Uh, what do they call it? Long format uh, conversations. Oh. Have you seen the Joe Rogan? Experience? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay, we go okay. there. Hold on. Look at Hold on. <laughs> we, should do this. we should just do this every week and have a side podcast. Right. I mean, we probably could. It's funny. Yeah, I, it doesn't take much effort. It's like, you oh, know, we're just... Yeah. No, I, I mean, you know what I meant. It's not uh, like... Uh, it's something that we just naturally... <laughs> I always like fake crying because people wonder if it's real. You know what? I was just... I uh, heard uh, an interview... We <laughs> just heard... With uh, Louis Sorry. Louis Anderson. Oh my God! Louis, ah, I can't do it. He cries every day. <laughs> he makes himself cry That's every amazing. day. Amazing. Wait, yeah. he does it for what reasons? He says. Uh, pro- probably to further you know Clean his out acting your ability. Maybe. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I you, I, I don't know. I just thought that was really wait, strange. You know, I'm I'm telling you, the truth. I, uh, this, I don't cry every day, but I literally. I tear up a lot more often than like most people would think, and I and I tear up because I do. I I stop and I think about like shit, where my life is, where it's going, or or something beautiful that like friends, close friends, like oh my god, like they're living and they're there for me, and they did this thing, and it makes me really feel choked up, and I I'm trying to always practice how I can hone that if I'm acting or something. I yeah, can. but wait, okay, X Files. Okay, X Files. Yes. What if we watched it once a week? And then before the episode, we obviously have some tea and some snacks and we can, we can discuss, we know what the episodes, or maybe we don't know what the episode's about, but we can talk about like x file uh-huh. stuff. That's, but, wait, so we'd pick one at random? Um, or? Oh, no, no, I like the, no, sec- sequential. I like that. But okay, w- let me rephrase this. So we meet up, maybe we should, we each bring like one item to the, to the viewing and it has to, and it could be kind of like x file item. I don't know. It could be a picture of something you, that you took that week. It could be something. So during the week, we have a little X-File in our mind huh. to bring to the table. And what we we bring it there, and we could like show each other, and it's cool. We'll talk about it. Then we watch this, the movie, I mean the uh, episode. Then after that, we talk about the episode, and we talk about like where it's heading, and, and talk movies like about uh, the filmmaking of it, about... Oh, the yeah. reality of it, the the questioning about it, right. and then our, with our items, we can do we can 
do something with those items that will slowly add to a f- kind of a conceptual, palpable um, piece of art or something. Hmm. You know what I mean? So like, let's okay, let's just this is, I'm just throwing it all. It's just yeah, coming out of my give head. Me an so let's say I bring um, a pencil that for some reason it's chipped in a certain way that looks like interesting or scary, like. M- like a dagger pen. I don't know what, okay, let's just say it's a pencil. That's like, that looks like a, like a stake I would hit in a vampire or whatever. Okay. Then you, that's an episode in the X Files. Yeah, yeah. See, and then, and then you bring something that re- like a picture that you had that looks, is a ghostly image on it. Okay. Hmm? So after the episode, we talk about stuff and maybe like you roll up the picture and we have like little like an arts and crafts session or something and you glue it together in a roll and then my pencil's balanced on there we get that zap glue you told me about like and we can start just zap it's like oh we made a like a little t and we don't even know what we're going to do with it then the next week start like we, just free form yeah and it, yeah yeah collage kind of weird yeah it's like a collage art piece now that's just something then that could maybe who knows maybe that in a month we actually can finish one of those and then now we do something new huh. it maybe it doesn't have to be for the whole seasons but we what if we created something this is what i love about letting your mind go wherever it goes yeah because this could come up with something we might never do this but we should because we love x-files um but just the fact that thinking what if one month yeah we everything we bring in eventually like we can even make it into an x you know and then we could donate it somewhere to like the X-Files Museum or something or I don't know or, or, or sell it to them with <laughs> bastards no, um, anyways the X-Files okay favorite episode oh my gosh okay just off the top of my head and I think you and I have discussed this many, many times the episode when one of those the guys he let his body gets like manipulated manipulated and he can cl- go into the vents oh Jeffrey Vic uh Damn, I want to say Victor Toom. Toom, it's, it's so scary Tombs or something. And he, yeah, and, and basically he can. That one is pretty. He freaky. like can escape the room because he can morph his body into like the th- smallest vent and climb through it. That's a really early episode too. Like yeah. it, that's such a great like idea and concept. God, uh, it's an innovative show. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and freaky. I mean, it's just so like freaky, the guy could fit within like an air duct or something, like a small vent ventilation port. Yeah, and what? You know, yeah, just just incredibly creepy. Oh and, my god! Wait, the one that scared me the most. Oh my god! I don't know if this is the one Brian Cranston was in, but that's another story. That's what they started Breaking Bad through because they remembered Brian Cranston came in once. For yeah, so cool. I remember that. I love Brian Cranston. I should try to find him one day. But anyway, so he's a cool, he's a great guy. I, I I just know it. Anyway, so uh, there's this episode where this guy, they, this family, lives in this weird area. Make sure it's not blinking. Uh, in this weird area, and up in the mountains, like kind of a hickish type deal. And there's two or three brothers, and they like take care of this mother. Oh, you're talking about Home. Is it called Home? That one's one of... I saw that episode when it premiered. Oh, my gosh. That and, and, and freaked me out They're so all They're, bad. like, taking care of the mother and killing people and feeding it to the mother or something? Well... Or what, what happens? It's it's almost like a... They're, they're, it's like a incestuous, deformed family that, like, has been having sex with their the the sons that were having sex with the mother to populate in a way keep it within the family i guess but the babies were so deformed that they would just kill off the babies yeah so, usually if it was if it's not going to work out with yeah the they just life, they, they get just rid of no the problem. babies and, and the babies had like these awful uh <sighs> deformities uh, what a sick episode but i i remember seeing it and i was like yeah. just so freaked out and then after when they i was like out, a kid too. they pull the drawer out and like that's where the mom's head like, yeah the she's, mom like, has, like, she's no under limbs. the bed yeah or they, no no like they cut, legs they or... cut up well they cut off they they cut off her arms and legs what why you think so? because they're they're i thought she was cr- just deformed like no, well, no no but did they show that they did that no uh, but all it, I remember is they pulled out like she's in a drawer. It, I think <laughs> well, she was off. under the bed and yeah, she's on like bed. this roller yeah, thing. Yeah, that. yeah. 
But they kept her under there, and she was like, uh, what? But, a- and, but they had like love and like like family love too. That was the cr- well, really it was thing incestuous. It, it was but like- but not even like sexual love. Like there was like a love to care for each other, and they like the sons were taking care of the mom, and the mom was taking care of them, and it was so weird because yeah, it's it was so untraditional. In such our heads. a bizarre episode, but um, but yeah, that freaked me out. But I love it because it used uh, a track by um. Damn, I forgot the name of the guy. I wish I, I wish I could remember. Uh, but it's called uh, "Wonderful, Wonderful," mm. and uh, the scene that they use it in is so great because the uh, the brother's car, the, their car pulls up to this home and it's playing this music and it's like really eerie. Yeah, and, and isn't isn't Mulder in there already? No, the but no, okay. um, the sh- one of the sheriffs of of the town. And uh, and they like murder him and his wife in their bed. Oh man, it's such a okay. violent, incredibly violent episode. <laughs> it, it actually, I, if it's, I remember correctly, it got banned from from uh, television. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I we have to do that, that like a, a weekly. Obviously, if I move over closer to you, a weekly thing is going to be easier, easier to do. But yeah. for sure, there's no reason why we can't once or twice a month get together in the beginning like and we're just like i go there once you go here you know what i mean yeah because we need that we need that no that'd be great um it's another good x-files moment (laughs) that was the worst impression that was pretty bad that i've ever heard (laughs) i used to play that on the piano a little bit yeah i love that um, Mark Snow, right? Mark Snow, oh, yeah. Mark Snow. I think I met a guy that worked with him. No, no, no. He said he he didn't actually like Mark Snow, and I, I kind of I like lost Mark the Snow? validation for the guy. <laughs> How do you not like Mark Snow? That guy just like but he's a there, musician. There's I mean, so many composer. moments. There's so many moments in the X Files where like the music is just so abstract and. It's perfect for what it is. Yeah. God, it's, it's perfect. Yeah, and, and it's like uh, texturizations of mm-hmm. sound, mm-hmm. like playing across different scenes. And, yeah. And those textures aren't necessarily like musical and melodic, but they're textures. And those textures that he created Support convey that same uh, um, uh, emotion to make you anxious to make you nervous of something coming up yeah. or just to like the unknown also like yeah, just the just, unknown of the x-files it's so unknown and you're trying to find it out as Mulder's finding it out right yeah, and then his textures really just support that it's yeah, like a, or some, it's like organized but you can't see I, the organization i wish they would release the uh, a soundtrack for each season or something that would oh, be great that would be really great you got to wonder though, how did he compose for like after two or three seasons? Did they somehow recycle it perhaps? And because he wrote so many, I wonder huh? if he wrote so Maybe. many things that literally instead of, I wonder if he actually himself like reorganized or rearranged stuff or he wrote it all out in the, for like one whole season and then they had like, I'm not going to say lower, but uh, what's the word? Other audio engineers or people that can arrange it differently per episode or did yeah, he stay the whole a, um, show like I have no idea yeah yeah it's that's a good question I told you know John Wheaton my friend John Wheaton remember I remember he him did yeah, yeah he uh, really nice guy how's, how's he doing he's doing pretty well he works a lot but he was the he won awards from the X-Files makeup and stuff that he did that's right he yeah. was an X-Files crew yeah but and man. he was like top designer or something and and then he worked wow. on uh, all the, the news. What's the zombie thing that Walking I never got Dead. into? Yeah, I never got into it. Uh, you know, I never got I into it. I tried one season. S- same it here. It was cool, but I'm like, eh. Yeah. See, I need to watch a cool old zombie movie. That's it. Like, I can't. Right. Like, I don't want to watch. Zombies every day. Right. You know, exactly. Although that would be their life if, you know, if you were in that show. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you would be, like, surrounded by zombies every day. <laughs> That's what a post-apocalyptic world would look like with I'm zombies sure. running. Yeah. And that would be kind of fucked up, you know. So I, I could see why a lot of those characters are really fucked up. Yeah, I, I remember that. I just, I don't know, I thought there was some kind of cheesiness to it. 
Oh yeah, but zombie you know films what? have a little bit of that. I get it. Yeah, I, I, movies or TV. again, I, I would I would much ra- rather watch a film than mm-hmm. a season or yeah. six seasons or whatever yeah. they're on now. It's like, oh man, another zombie. Yeah, like the X Files. Why it's so great? It's so versatile. It's like, oh, another X File, but the X Files usually completely different than the last X File. Yeah, and and. Even though it was had like fantastical episodes where you know um, uh, creatures and you know monsters of the week and aliens mm-hmm. and all that stuff, it also had like really the the real moments the like people moments. The people moments are actually pretty terrifying too yeah. because some of these government uh, shadowy people are actually really terrifying. I mean. They're murderous and, you know, Cancer Man. Cancer Man. Oh, oh my. Interesting. One of my favorite episodes <sighs> Musings of a Cigarette Smoking Man. If you have you seen that? I'm sure I have. I've watched all of them, but I just don't remember that's, the name. That's probably one of the, the episodes that I keep returning to. It is so good and it <sighs> focuses on uh, the Cancer Man. I remember. Uh, William when- B. Davis is so good in it. And. And and there's a um, an actor who plays his younger self in that, and it takes him through where he he has a part in killing um, John oh, F. Kennedy, yeah. Martin Luther King. It, it's they touch upon some really interesting things. Mm. So he's just been in it for so long. Yeah, yeah. And he like he kind of likes Mulder because wasn't he? He's not Mulder's father. Well, no. But he's like his. He did something with his Mulder's mom. He was. I think I dad. think they had an affair. Yeah, he worked yeah, with his dad yeah, yeah, yeah. and had an affair with his mom. I believe. It I don't. So I don't remember man, when exactly. that came out, it's, uh, it was intense for Mulder. <laughs> yeah, right. Mulder. We could just have a we could have a podcast just about the X Files. Seriously. I mean, literally, we you just watch it and then we talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, the, I mean, there's like millions of people that love that show, and then yet there's so many people that don't understand the beauty of that show. And and there's so many people now that are just completely missing that show. Yeah, they don't even know. It, there's so much content out there that like I don't even think it's uh, they won't know. It's, it's on in syndication on TV anymore. Or mm. reruns. But now, what about there's a new one? Did, oh, did you the see new episodes. It? I you know I, I saw one episode. I saw the very first episode okay. of the new and it, the well, new season. Wasn't done well to you. Ah, uh, it's just it's just like you're trying to know. do something that was done. They, you know what Vince Gilligan said it best. He was like, "I want to get in. I don't want a show to go on for too long." Which is uh, partly why uh, Breaking Bad ended where it did at season five, right? Uh, I so. Think so. Uh, amazing yeah, he said he said in an interview that he uh, he didn't want a show to kind of drag on, and he just for the case, yeah, sake, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think that's what's happening with the X Files, where they probably should have ended it maybe around like season seven, at the most season seven, like yeah. season eight and nine. Yeah, they're interesting, and they do have some pretty cool episodes that I, I enjoyed but mm-hmm. yeah definitely they, they lost stopped some of that early. charm because they it's yeah the character like the Mulder left thing. you know oh yeah but what about when characters. John Doggett when he came in wasn't that was I kind of like the Doggett episodes he, uh, sure. like I said I, I like what season I like was some, that uh, when Doggett came in maybe eight no yeah it was a that really late? late season yeah Oh, yeah. All I know is I remember for sure one season with John Doggett. I was still in, and it, I was it was fair game. And they're no, but they're really like good. When I'm Scully not... started getting pregnant, it was right. That was later too. It was like oh, yeah. it was really late. Remember she got well. She gets pregnant again twice. in in the later seasons in in the most recent seasons. Like literally, meaning the 2016 seasons. See, this is that. Okay, so <laughs> we need to watch all of them. I, I think Out I could of, skip the. I, you okay, know, what? I might want to see him, but from what I understand, I I am probably one of the very few people who will um, say that they enjoyed the overall the the story arc of the aliens of how the government is really trying to work with the aliens, but at the same time working against them hmm. and. And a lot of people kind of miss that part because they only focus on like the Monster of the Week episodes. And I think what happened with the the latest seasons is that 
they realize that maybe they didn't have enough time or there wasn't enough. They knew that it wasn't going to continue on. Mm. Um, so they didn't focus on any of the overall story arc or the X-Files story. Mm. They just kind of created Monster of the Week episodes. And oh, that's, that's what when they did this? Did. I don't even remember. This is like 2016, you said, uh, right? F- yeah, 16. Yeah. And then they're not still doing it, are they? I think they're, they're just either just finished their, uh, the 11th season or, or they are, um, hmm. or, but Vince Gilligan, or they're, Gilligan's they're not in it. Doing it. He's not part of it. I don't think he is. No weird. Like, come on. He, him. Was it him and someone else that really started that show, or just was it just him? No, Chris Carter. Oh yeah, Chris Carter. Yeah, Chris Carter. Oh wait, how was Vince Gilligan involved then? I think he came around like season oh, three. But as what producer, writer? Uh, writer. Yeah. He definitely him. He added a lot. But yeah, Chris Carter. What happened to him? Did was he involved in Breaking Bad? No. 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 But. Wow, like what? Happened? Wouldn't he not allow it? He don't. You don't need to have it if you know it's gonna mess it up. Yeah, so I I think that's what's happening. Like if uh, Gillian Gillian Anderson uh, decided not that she didn't want to play Scully anymore, so I think that's why they're kind of like in the recent stuff or not yeah, before in re- that. No, in the recent the, because I thought before she probably decided to. I think she came back just because everybody else had. Yeah, come she back. was like an homage, and she's right, like, right. right. But then and, she realized, all right, like, come on. And what a great character she is. I mean, she's like incredibly, like a strong female. I know. I love. I character. so was attracted to Scully for yeah. a lot of years. Yeah. So beautiful. Just, she's she was beautiful, and then she can kick some and ass. She's smart, and then and she's, she's also incredibly emotional. intelligent. And then yeah, she's incredibly human. And yeah. It was such a great character. I remember, like, she has like some kind of. I think she has some kind of. I don't know if it's a music video or some kind of. A little provocative, sexy video. Some I've seen it, and I was so surprised. She's so not like Scully, but it wasn't over the top. Like, oh, well, she's like trying to be all like hot, but it was some kind of music video. I don't know yeah. if she's singing in it or what. It was, Weird. and it was wasn't too much after X Files. It wasn't like she was, you know, past her. So she sang, huh? Or she's Maybe, a, yeah, she's a know, musician some, of some I, sort. No, no musician. It was some video. I, I don't know, but mm. yeah. Uh, yeah. So I uh, the X Files. I mean, I wouldn't mind sitting down and, and watching it the the latest a- seasons. Yeah, after we watch the all the real real seasons. Oh yeah, yeah for then sure. We, because I can maybe check it out. And we can Joe if we watch it together, it might be okay because we can like talk about oh, what. Why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be fun. Um, but I, I do remember watching one episode and, and not really feeling it at all. Was it because, because this is what usually happens to me, was it like, oh, like the actors now are not how they were when we really loved the show? Well, or is it something else with the writing? I mean, it's them. It's them. They're definitely older in appearance, you know, and, and that's, and that's hard understandable. To, like, it's understandable, but it's hard to make it work in your brain if you were in the mode how they looked for that most of the time. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and at 20 the same years time, past, it's, right? Right, almost. It's not, almost yeah, 20 like, years, yeah. They're getting to be like 50s. No, no, actually uh, a little less, maybe like 12 years have passed. Okay, well, it's a lot. It's over that is a lot. Sure. I mean, when did x no, finish? No, I'm sorry, you're right. Oh, like, it's almost, it's almost, uh, it's nearing 99. 20. 99. It's nearing finish? 20. They had 2000, they had a movie. The X Files yeah. movie, or one of them. Uh, I think they they also had a movie in like ninety seven. Yeah, I think. But like the last movie, I thought was. Maybe I never saw. I never saw the second one. Was, did you? I don't remember. I know. I, there's some things. First one was really good. Yeah. Movie? Oh my yeah. gosh. Especially since it bridged like the gap between, uh, I think, like the sixth season and the seventh season. Wow. So they did a good job there, but I think that's where they should have ended it. Like mm-hmm. maybe a season after the movie, they mm-hmm. should have just. Which is, I think, season seven. Mm. They should have just ended it right there. They yeah. Not gone any further. <laughs> and uh, and it would have been like a classic show yeah. that Perfect. had its run, was incredibly insightful and, and provocative and thought, thought-provoking. Yeah. And, and then it would have been awesome. And that's how we would have remembered it. I know, but now but it's, it's like, like, oh, they kind of went and tried to oh, do something again. Right. Try to make another thing they did. It's like, no, make something new or different. 
Right. Well, uh, Chris Carter went on to do uh, Millennium. Never heard of it. Oh, man. Millennium. 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 Yeah. What yeah, year? Yeah, involving demons. What year? What year? <laughs> Terminator 1. <laughs> oh, fuck. I love that movie. God. Um, I was going to say Millennium was uh, involved, like, uh, the occult. And it, Chris Carter was really into, you know, creating stories about the occult and involving, like, demonic what forces. What year was that? Oh, I'm sorry. You're still asking me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 1999. I think it started uh, 2000. It, it was a very short-lived series. Oh, anything else that he did? Because how was... I mean, he... How did he, you know, that'd be interesting to find out how he started out. How did he get that opportunity? Yeah, um, I used to have the X-Files episodes on on uh, VHS and stuff. And and before every episode that would play, Chris Carter would do like a small interview. And he t- really? Yeah, it was really, it's really oh insightful. Oh my gosh. Yeah, dude, That's I, cool. I loved watching uh, everything. I love I, that. Whenever I'd find like in the store, because this is when they were getting rid of all their fucking VHS tapes and everything. All these like uh, video stores, they'd be getting rid of X Files episodes. I would just be grabbing them, <laughs> yeah, like five for a dollar or some shit like that. VHS man, yeah, Remember um, that movie VHS. I've never, yeah. I never. Wait, Didn't okay, you tell I, me to see. You're the one that told me. To, is no, it VHS or is it some other one? That no, one's there is a terrible movie. and one's interesting. Okay, VHS is actually a pretty good film. I've never seen it, very avant garde though. It's um, it's kind of done in the same style as like Blair Witch Project and uh, oh. uh, Cloverfield. Okay, well, you know, the, like the handheld yeah. video and documentary and style. But the one you were telling, you told me to. I'm pretty sure you're the one. Is when his hand turned into like a gun, and then the oh, flesh video drum. Go- yeah, what is it? Video drum. Video drum. Yeah, that is wacky, weird, cool that is movie. Like Cronenberg. Yeah, yeah. I told from, you Cron- from Terminator One. No, no. Wait, who's the the guy from Terminator One? Is in it. The guy that's remember the the uh, detectives. Right oh, you're man. talking about Lance Hendrickson. Yeah, yeah. Well, he is the star of Millennium. How funny that you. Yeah. Oh, I remember that show. Then I think. Yeah, dude. dude. He didn't. He, he stars as Frank. He Black. also did the movie The Mat. Remember the Mad Max? Or no, not sorry, not Mad Max. The Max. The no. dog. The dog that was insane. Oh, you're talking about. Who um, not no. No, you're, you're oh. talking about a. Uh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> I love filmmaking. Sorry, I forgot who it is, but oh, yeah, you, I, the know do- you're, the I know the dog that about. climbs the trees. And yeah, he, he has all these. That was a creepy that movie, was man. Cool, man. Damn. I'm trying to, you know, indeed, I always, I remember seeing this movie about like this these wolves, and they were like psychotic wolves or something. And it, <laughs> I'm, I'm way off. I, I'll, I'll find out the movie and I'll bring it up again. Okay. But. um it was so stupid. Okay, I just have to describe this okay. one scene that I remember. <laughs> this wolf was like trying to, it was going to kill this guy and he's in the car. Somehow it jumps through the car and it uses its like uh, claws to decapitate him. And he like gets de- decapitated. It's so weird <laughs> and kind of stupid. But I love those movies. At the same time, it was one of those movies where you like watched as a kid. Yeah, and, and like, it was the like. like f- yeah, just like a fake head getting cut off. Yeah, and, and you never remember like the whole movie. You just kind of remember that part <laughs> because it was so fucking weird. Uh, anyways, uh, Lance got Hen- it. Lance Henriksen is an incredibly good actor. Yeah, he's cool. And he's oh, he was at the end of uh, uh, Alien Three. Do you remember that part? I love aliens. Oh yeah, aliens. were they like alien and aliens? Really were the like troopers uh, in Alien Three? Man, those those soldiers that they have in there—they look so fucking cool. Everybody shits on Alien Three. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You've I, never heard that? Like I a lot of people alien, cannot aliens stand aliens and Alien Two, right? No, a- alien, like, aliens, aliens, and Alien Three. It is Alien Three after that. Okay. Yeah, David so, Fincher movie. Really? Yeah. So I don't. A lot I know, of people shit on it. Shit on it. I don't know if that's the one I started to go. Oh, okay, but definitely Alien and Aliens is is definitely one of the tops in my books for for. Oh that. yeah. Oh yeah. I forgot three. I remember when I got into that phase. Oh, I love phase. <clears throat> yeah, I remember. I, I think I my dad took me to see it in in the theater. Like, he took me all the science fiction that's movies. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I I loved Alien three when Damn. when I was a kid. But I can see why people would say talk really? shit a lot about it. 
but um, but I personally like it. So screw them. Um, Michael Bain, Terminator, and yeah. aliens or whatever. Uh, Terminator, Kyle Reese. It's just like the perfect Kyle Reese. I know. He's a dream about being Kyle Reese, you know? Yeah. You look a lot like him. That's why. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. No, but I, I got a little, I don't want to say it, but irritated when they came out with another freaking Terminator. And it was Which Kyle one? Reese. It was like, I it started Terminator like eight or five or whatever. And you're talking about the most recent one? I don't know. But a year and a half ago, maybe. And two years, probably. So they came up with this movie and there was a Kyle Reese again and he was like my age and I was like damn it I yeah I was gonna chance. say even the actor kind of I have finally a chance like oh if I would be in if I was in the circuit in the acting circuit as far as having a manager and an agent like maybe they, I could have went up for the role or something but I'm happy I wasn't in that role that was a terrible movie and that guy which Oh, you're talking about oh, the I third not, one or the, no, um, like the it was like the fifth man insurrection terrible terrible section you're talking know. about the one with the female t1000 kind of thing right probably yeah because i, I, I walked I, out I of that exactly. theater i went in because it was in the dollar theater and i just was having fun with a friend but yeah i literally i wanted to walk out i didn't on that one just because he didn't want to but lance hendrickson and millennium oh it's such a good i lo- the story and the the universe is inc- is really amazing short-lived only three years worth of uh, wow. of uh, show. We should next time we should talk about. What do you mean next time? Why don't we just talk about it now? What if we? What if we just that's never? <laughs> we never it's stop. Six a.m. See, that's like, what we could do. It's funny, but uh, oh, Terry O'Quinn is in this too. Man, I gotta see Millennium again. Millennium is such a good show, and they had an X Files episode that's really fucking good. Just one. <laughs> no, it's kidding. No. Sorry, I I am as soon as I get on X Files, I like I don't want to stop talking. Yeah, about yeah, it. yeah. Even if you get, like, I'm, I'm try to get get onto another subject, I'm like, oh yeah, well, Mulder did that. And yeah, I know, man. No, I, I mean, when you get into it, it's a life. It's your world. Like, yeah, yeah. And it's not. You don't even. It's so good. You don't even feel bad about it. <clears throat> the fuck. The you know crazy what I mean? thing is, there's so many shows that tried to fucking recreate kind of like the same thing or like NCIS those type of shows all take their fucking cues from like Dana Scully and Fox Mulder but yeah they, I don't know I have such a big problem with NCIS and all that shit Scully CSI I meant oh, CSI. I meant CSI, CSI. NCIS NCIS, what the hell? NCIS is, is a different show oh, and okay. that I kind of like but oh, okay. but CSI it just really bugs me. Scully, I need you to research the skateboard. Okay, got it. What are you going to do, Mulder? <laughs> Remember, that's the perfect way for them to separate. And he's like, I'm going to go investigate a crime. You know, and then he just separates. And like, it's so funny how the, the dynamics between them. Wait, oh. what the hell is that thing? That's an air, for, uh, air purifier. Purifier? Yeah. Uh, like an ionizer? Kind yeah, of thing? something like that. Wait, what does it do exactly? Yeah, it purifies. To, is it's it on like, right okay, now? No, yeah. Is it functioning? No, <laughs> is that what that beep was? No, that was my shock clock. That shocks me for bad habits. <laughs> As I can explain another time. Well, hold on. So this thing, because it's been on this whole it time. It looks like a like an R2-D2 down Yeah, there. it's like an R2, like a perverted R2-D2 is like <laughs> per- staring at you. <laughs> yeah. Like kinda. while you sleep. <laughs> it's he's like, like <laughs> flat chested and he's just not yeah, round he's just headed. waiting for you to go to sleep so he can do some <laughs> some weird things to you. Yeah. No, uh, I, but seriously. He's though, an like, air purifier. I mean, he's an air. That. He, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, okay. So it's okay. not a humidifier. No, I wish. What it does is it has a fil- it has two filters, one in the front. Isn't a humidifier <laughs> like... So, so I used to have one as a kid like my because... Wait. allergies yeah i think it like, helps but sometimes i go i wonder does it help because <laughs> right because it's just like i mean yeah. but then you I see that the too. air get, i mean the filter gets dirty but, but what obviously if it's, just like- it's just pulling in the air the <laughs> shit right. in the air it's gonna get caught i mean what does that do just <laughs> and then you have I, to keep replacing it so yeah. it's <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we're getting to that funny zone <laughs> of lateness that I love, and it's so rare to have anymore these days when you have to like. Right, I haven't, I haven't done this in a long time. And, I mean, not this is productive. Yeah, <sighs> we were talking about purifiers. So okay, funny. so the air purifier it, it doesn't do anything else, but what, how does okay, it wait, purify wait, wait, the wait, air? Though okay, one there's an odor purifier, and it's I don't know how it really does it, but literally, <laughs> <laughs> if you if you're like sitting in front of it, it's under my okay. This air purifier is under my desk, and it, I, if I like fart, literally it turns it kicks in. It goes. <laughs> <laughs> it senses your fart it yeah it senses any like off odor so if i had some if i have it on auto that's what it does and then it has a bigger filter for the actual air purification and you don't have to change that except like once a year i don't know but I'm t- i recently i've okay i stopped using it for a while then recently i i've noticed like damn you know some of the food i leave out of my place is small it's kind of getting cooped up so I open my two windows. I turn that on full blast for the whole night, yeah. or when I leave the apartment place, and I come back and it. I think it does help, and it makes it less um, stagnant, you hmm. know. And then I put a little, right. yeah, oil freshener over here. And now you can't put oil on that. No, thing, no, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Destroy it. Uh. uh. Yeah, no, um, I've always been curious about like air purifiers and ionizers and humidifiers and all these things. Yeah. Yeah, but I definitely think pollution is a problem. Oh, God. You know, it's. (sighs) I love Escape from New York. From New York. Such a great movie. Yeah. Gosh, I can't believe I've never seen it until tonight. I it's saw the, the L.A. Escape from L.A. and that was what I thought this one was. It was, it was. Oh no, dear God, no! Escape from L.A. Like the funniest thing was, it's like a knockoff of the same movie with the same people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and just the the effects behind it were so like. They didn't put in the efforts they put in in the first one. Well, it's not even that. It's like they tried to utilize the latest technology and it just looked bad. Because it, I mean, even the, when did it come out? Like 97, right? 96. 96. So, like, we'd had already had, what, uh, Independence Day? Jurassic Park. All these, like, really insane yeah, mega blockbuster movies with effects, effects that are just mind-blowing and still hold up um even independence day i mean a lot of the oh, effects that they use yeah um and then escape from la it's just like oh the green screen uh, or blue screen that they use is just horrible <laughs> and it it i don't know it's just one of those movies that you easily forget interesting but what i don't get is john carpenter directed that as well right so what was it that made him maybe like perhaps there were some new things and he's like let's just try them out let's do them but it just didn't work out or was it a budgetary thing or was he during that year or those two years whatever he however long it took like was he just on a different zone than his other stuff because yeah i don't he for don't sure know. is the attention to detail person he's right. for sure reveal like revealing like we were talking about like showing things and really taking the nice pace but it's weird when that happens like how could that happen have you seen his music video who john carpenter just his music video what do you mean yeah he well he had a band in the 80s no i didn't know about that yeah yeah you gotta check it out um, he sings uh if you can call it that yeah he's he does some 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 sort of weird but the uh, interpretation is it, is of the singing. music he plays cool. Oh, it's it's eighties. Okay, because he. But it doesn't his sound. Soundtracks are awesome. His movies. soundtracks are awesome. Dun, dun. Man, that when Minimal that drum mystery. machine was like kicking in when the oh car, my the, gosh the uh, fleet of cars the, the Duke's cars so and then that good. yeah and it wasn't it was cheesy like, it was so powerful no it was like a Lin drum or or like a one of the an Oberheim drum drum machine or something just playing that hard kick and gosh. snare yeah very good oh my gosh i almost I, want to rec- recreate that like <sighs> into a song or something i want yeah yeah i definitely really cool. need to rewatch that movie soon but first i need to rewatch all the other dean cundy movies yeah 
that too. Uh, but don't forget that uh, John Carpenter music video. You'll you'll like it. It's really, really it's like super eighties wow. cheesy. I, again, it doesn't sound like his soundtrack. It sounds like him trying to make like a pop uh, hmm. song wow. for the eighties. And and his band's really the t- name of his band is really weird too. It's like something Cadillac or convertible or hmm. I don't know. I forgot. But um, Bill Paxton. Who passed away like a couple, like either last year or two years ago? Yeah, I know. Um, he had a really uh, funny music video as well, and James Cameron um, and Catherine Bigelow, who were I think a couple at the time, they mm. were they were husband and wife or something like they were boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, they collaborated with him on a on a music video. So and Bill Paxton's a singing songwriter. Yeah, yeah. that's a good. It's it's cool. Wait, it's got wait, some cool I moments. Was Bill Paxton in Jurassic Park? No. No, no, no. Wait, how who's what is he from mainly? Just tell me. I forget the fucking Aliens, dude. Okay. Aliens. What else? Uh he's been in so many Near Dark. Mm-hmm. Um Okay. If you haven't seen Near Dark, that's also Lance Hendrickson. Really? Yeah. Cool. Um who else? Okay, so I oh Lance Hendrickson me. and uh, the the stepmom from uh, or the foster mom from Terminator Two, she's in a lot of uh, their James Cameron productions. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, she also plays. Uh, did you know that that same woman who plays the foster mom in Terminator Two is also uh, what Vasquez from Aliens, the Mexican chick. Oh my gosh, there's so many interesting. They're all it's six degrees, it's all, man. Yeah. It's all connected. Six all James. degrees, man. But Bill, uh, Bill Paxton, you know, he's in Twister. Um, oh, okay, that's where I remember him from. Twist, Twister, but not Aliens. He I played, don't um, remember him in Aliens somehow. Like I'm he just, played a uh, Twister was cool. Oh damn! There was Hicks. Uh, whoa, I forgot his name in Aliens, but uh, it's very good. Yeah, you see the crack in there. Uh, yeah, I. He I cracked his, he it. Broke his camera on his phone. I cracked essential. it. Right. Yeah. I never even used it, anyways. I mean, just for like stupid pictures of products or something. Yeah. But the selfie cam works. So don't say selfie ever in front of me, please. So I the, call it the self portrait camera. The front camera. The front Thank camera you. works now, and, or the, it still works, and it works pretty pretty well. But I just have to use this weird <laughs> technique. Um, but. Yeah, I got a crack, and then uh, I dropped it again after that, and it just stopped working. Now it just has like a red blur. <laughs> kind of reminds. We me should of- probably cut this off. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a disclaimer that <laughs> you're like <laughs> I'm gonna do a disclaimer that like hey we get it, we talk some stuff about like camera stuff, and then we oh go god, into it goes crazy so crazy stories of NASA and <laughs> X Files. Oh, yeah. Man, it'll be fun. We should okay. really, yeah, we should really stick to a topic next time. No, I, I, oh no, this is cool. This is, I, I okay, like this. So this, this is, is, is totally the format is just there. There is a format usually, and it's just I have questions for whoever I'm interviewing, but just to talk about film stuff is so fun and photography and lenses. Oh and yeah, movies. Well, it's always good. I'm sure we'll do more. Yeah, for sure. But let, let, let's uh, let's end this night with a little. I was grateful that we got to hang out today. Oh yeah, and tonight, and meet uh, one of our amazing cinematographers in, in this day and age in Hollywood, and yeah, it was a wonderful time. Yeah, it was. All right, signing off. Later. Just a reminder, guys. Like every episode. Most things we mention by name will be in the show notes section on our website, unfakeittillyoumakeit.com, and they should also be in the iTunes or other podcast notes section as well, with easy links to find them. If you like the show, please show your support and leave a review, make my day, and, and let me know what you like best. And if you got this far, why don't you take it one step further? Consider becoming a subscriber It's free, and all the cool kids are doing it every Sunday. I have a free newsletter I send out to subscribers, which has the cutest little name, Smorgasbord Sunday. 
It's a weekly menu which includes the latest episode, along with cool stuff I hunt and gather during the week to optimize professional and personal growth in the entertainment industry, and this so-called life. Wonderful things, but not limited to unique tools, industry hacks, inspirational excerpts, video gems, powerful quotes, and other magical doohickeys I uncover. If you'd like to sign up, just go to unfakeittillyoumakeit.com, click the podcast option where you can then enter your email address and sign up. I have been logging all these weekly awesomes that come into my life for years now, and finally, I have a nice little place to store them and share them. Time is running out. Time is running out. I thank you for spending time with me today. Thank you for listening to the Unfake It Till You Make It podcast. For detailed sources and show notes for this episode, visit www.unfakeittillyoumakeit.com. Until next time, get up, get going, and get creative. Get creative.